Um, if the cops are body holes, I say no, I'll be good. Oh, I like it. We're going to have got nobody here yet. <laughs> Bring my charge off of me now, please. All right, what's up? Seeing persons coming on. Just bear with me a bit. I wanted to make sure and be here present <clears throat> at the time I said I will be. But give me a couple of minutes, 15 or so, just to finish that up. And I'll wait some other things. So in the meantime, here, yeah, books, phone parts, etc. We're working on Cape Unit 2. Module 3. Yesterday we did Module 1, which is um, Las Actualidades, and that, that simply means current affairs. Today we're going to work on Module 3, and the title for Module 3 is uh, La Industria y los Asuntos Económicos, which is Industry and Economic Affairs. So we're going to be looking today at the topics of um, working at home, tourism, and sustainable development, that sort of stuff, yeah? So I look forward. I shall be going live on IG in a bit as well. Who do we have? Give a hail now. Send your name and a message. Give us a hail to know that you're there. Okay, we still have some time based on the Instagram time or clock, if you want to call it that. Um, right, so, we, so we have some more light as well. You can see my face clearly, or more clear. I'll we just hold on a little bit. Think a word for it. Just posting on Instagram, yeah, I'm multitasking, guys. Nice. So the good thing about this is that once we um once we make this video, business can go up your top first, so it won't have to be um actually live. Yeah. Now one of my students, Adeline, she's celebrating her birthday today. So she may have some other things in order, but of course we're here to save the day. <laughs> so folks can always go watch after as well.
Nice, 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 nice. Let's see. Yay, so we're back on. So welcome everybody again. So we're back on, we're on Instagram as well. And let me go live there as well. So Christians can see, have a look at what we're going through today. But we'd like to share with our um, masses, if you want to call it masses. Nice. Welcome, Instagram. We're live and in living color. So my are in all black today. So today we're doing some revision. Oh, keep um, module, keep unit two, module three. And we will be looking at tourism, including ecotourism, looking at um, home office, or what we call teletrabajo, also looking at e-commerce, agriculture, yeah. So those are some of the topics that we're going through today. So while we wait on that, let me just pull up some things here. Yikes. Hi, hi, Ms. Taylor. Profe, ¿qué tal? Number six. Miss T-Y-I-C-E. Todo fino, todo bien aquí. Gracias a Dios. Pues estoy aquí para compartir con los niños otra vez. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Just bear with me a bit, guys. I just put enough some stuff on the laptop here. I had a very busy morning. I didn't want to leave my house, but unfortunately, I had to. Just to clear up some things that what has been. So, here we are now. How's the YouTube live going? Nice. So we have some other things. Just give me one sec there, guys. So we're starting off today with e-commerce while I'm waiting on some of these other things to come up. Seems like I may need a new laptop. Okay, nice. So to begin. Today, so a little later on, you will see the reason for this being on the board. It's 
screen as I've been done today. Nice. So we started off with this with uh, e-commerce. Um, this. Or as we say in Spanish, el comercio. El comercio. Electrónico. Comercio electrónico. And as always, you know, I like to speak about the topics first before we go into the notes. So e-commerce is basically business, not in the traditional sense of where we have a market, a marketplace being anywhere where we could buy and sell goods and services, not only the fruit and vegetable markets, as we know. <coughs> Excuse. So once we have a marketplace, some good or services that are sold in a specific place, um, with e-commerce, we are no longer limited by physical or geographical location and space, but now we can do the same transactions with the use of ICTs, with the use of information and com communication technologies. And of course, it is powered by the internet. Yeah, so basically that's what e-commerce is. Nice, I'm seeing some other notes here. I can't seem to find my notes on my computer, but gracias a Dios, ya están en la mente. Ya los, tien, ya los tengo en la mente para revisar o para... Um, Let's see what in English. I already have the notes in my mind in order to reference. Para hacer referencia. Eso es. Nice. So, as I said, e-commerce is... <clears throat> Let's get a note on that. El comercio, el comercio electrónico se refiere a las transacciones Comerciales, comerciales que um, toman lugar o son hechos o que están hechos, las transacciones que están hechas con la ayuda de los ahí sí tiene Spanish este dice con las tecnologías ahí sí te dice de información y comunicación La red, the internet, computadora, aplicaciones en línea, etc. Yeah? So, Kofi, welcome. They go fine. One, but nonetheless, you can still get some viable information as you prepare for unit two. So basically, I see e-commerce, sorry, e-commerce is, or refers to se refiere a las transacciones comerciales, commercial transactions that take place online or with the use of ICTs, yeah? So we go on Facebook. Let me see if I could give some examples of e-commerce and face. No, sorry, not Facebook, but Instagram, because I know we have our Instagram, the generation of persons, persons at this stage will be doing Cape and so with that generation that will be more users of Instagram than with Cape, than with um, Facebook. Right? So, <clears throat> for example, we want to buy something. This carnival time, one of the pages I've seen advertising on that was Sun Shop TT, I believe. So we have persons that run stores, 
deliberately um, through Instagram only. This is an example of e-commerce. One of the most famous examples of e-commerce is what we know as Amazon. Now, Amazon basically started as a virtual library. It started off in the mid-1990s with the founder Jeff Bezos trying to give an alternative for persons to, to rent um, books. So instead of going to a library, they rent a book there and purchase your books there as well. And it would have developed into something way more than that, where any single product that you would like to buy, basically, not only books, but most products that you want to buy, physical products, you can get it on Amazon, of course, within a specific um, weight and size limitation. But the majority of them can be found via Amazon. So Amazon allows for persons to go on the internet and go on their site and purchase goods, los bienes, B-I-E-N-E-S, purchase goods, comprar los bienes en la comodidad de su casa, in the comfort of their home. So that is one of the more um, popular examples of e-commerce, as I like to say. We also have many, many different things here. We have banks which allow businesses to do transactions online as well. So I know, for instance, the Citizens Bank, they have or oh, I believe it's, let me don't sell out anything. I believe this should be um, on board by now. But I know that they have a feature where it's on board already. It's coming very soon, whereby persons with businesses, small businesses, you can have a link on your account for persons to make payments to your SCB account. Yeah, that's another form of e-commerce. Any form of business transactions. And we didn't limit it to just las com la compra y la venta de, las, de los bienes. We didn't just limit it to the purchase and answer of our goods. Any transaction that can be taken, that can take place online will be considered e-commerce. Any business transaction that can take place online will be considered e-commerce. Yeah? And we had the examples that I gave you just now with Amazon and with um, the Citizens Bank having certain capabilities put in place as well, so stuff like PayPal, those are other examples of e-commerce as well. So some look, let's look at some of the benefits of e-commerce, beneficios first, and then we'll look at some of the inconveniences, inconveniences of this event that has um, disadvantages. So some of the, um, some of the, this is what I'm looking for, some of the benefits of e-commerce is, Mass barato, first and foremost, is cheaper because we, for many different reasons, we don't have to spend money from the perspective of the businesses. You don't have to spend money in transport to transport goods and services. You don't have to pay um, drivers. So many costs are cut down through e-commerce. You don't have to spend money on paper that you would have used to generate receipts before. So it is cheaper in many different um, aspects. In the, um, just to repeat the last point in Spanish, el papel que usamos para uh, generar recibos, R-E-C-I-B-O, um, el recibo, that's how we say receipts, or one way of saying receipts, yeah? So this cheaper, más cómodo, or comodidad and comfort as well is done from the um, comfort of your home. You have mass accessible businesses and transactions become more accessible. This point, sorry, I just uh, skimmed over that very quickly, but this simply just states that listen, this can be done from the comfort of your home. Mass accessible simply means that yo, this can be done anywhere. No tenemos que esperar uh, las horas de negocio. We don't have to wait on business hours para hacer las transacciones. Entonces, si a uh, no, medianoche yo quiero hacer una compra en línea, lo puedo hacer. If at midnight I want to do an online purchase, I can do that. Si estamos haciendo negocio de manera tradicional, if we are doing business on a traditional level, Entonces, eso no es posible. This is not possible. Tendríamos que esperar hasta el siguiente día, a las 8 de la mañana, a las 9, hasta que 
la tienda o el negocio está abierto. ¿Ok? So, in the traditional business sense, we would have had to wait until the following day, 8 o'clock in the morning or 9, whenever, when the business is open to be able to do that transaction. With e-commerce, all transactions are more accessible and we do not have no es un límite um, el espacio y tiempo. So space and time are not obstacles or not on limits, yeah? So we don't have to wait on the actual shop um, to be open, that kind of thing. And another word to know, obviously, like a shop or store is el local. So this is a very common word that is used. If you want to say, uh, ¿A qué hora abierta el local? What time does this store open? So we can say la tienda or the business place or the, the, the location of the shop or the business, for instance, is el local. Yeah? You can also say that as well. So we have where with e-commerce, transactions are cheaper, they are more comfortable, they are more accessible. Um, it happens way faster, más rápido. Celeridad means quickness or speed, yeah? So it's más rápido or hay celeridad. So, entonces, con solo un Click. There's only one click. Compramos. O hacemos compras. For example, yeah? There's only one click we can shop. Or we can purchase things. As opposed to having to go, having to wait in line, having to pull out your card, having your wrong card, having to pull out, if it's a credit card, then you have to pull out your ID. All of that stuff is necessary also doing e-commerce. Just one click, the information is there, and we are able to make purchases, yeah? So those are some of the benefits of e-commerce. So we, deal, we dealt with simple prices, what's up? So we started off with an example of e-commerce, sorry, an example and a definition of e-commerce, and then we looked at some of the um, benefits. Now, I'm going to leave this on the board a bit while I explain a bit again. We also want to look at what are some of the um, <clears throat> inconveniences, inconveniences or disadvantages of using e-commerce. Yes, there are disadvantages that exist, and some of those will include um, a lack of privacy, because information can be obtained by more parties as opposed to if it has, we have our wallet, our money, that sort of stuff. Only we can have it, or the information is on us alone. Once we put anything on the internet, it is possible to be, and we can be hacked, and the information can be accessed by um, other persons. We also have the threat of fraud, credit card fraud, which exists as well as another dumb of e-commerce um what else what else um so we have hacking we have fraud which takes place and do that the main ones really and truly yeah i can't think of anything else right now any of the other downsides of e-commerce but those are the main ones so I'm just going to give one minute while I'll finish taking on this. Let me just run and grab a drink of water in the meantime. Nice, so we continue now with the disadvantages of e-commerce. 
So man die das dann mal zwischen so ein Konferenzes in Convenientes son el fraude la información de tarjeta de crédito está robada credit card information is stolen we also have la pirateria or hacking and what happened because of hacking what is it down call of hacking falta de privacidad a lack of privacy de información y pues personal, no solo financiero, sino personal. So not only financial information that um, loses its privacy, but any personal information on a person can lose privacy. Yeah? So those are some of these threats, las amenazas, or the inconvenientes, inconveniences that exist when we're speaking about e-commerce. Yeah, so let's move quickly on now to the next topic, which is el teletrabajo. So this is a wonderful topic for this time. We have el teletrabajo. And what is el teletrabajo? El teletrabajo, let's as always, let's discuss the point or discuss the concept first before we go into actual um, the actual definition and stuff. Excuse me. So el teletrabajo, to put it in simple terms, is basically exactly what is taking place right now, especially with us teachers. Uncle Sam Titi, what's going on? I see you joined. I started to follow you recently. I have some wonderful pictures on the page. Making persons crave um, bacon shark and stuff that you all said. So, back to the lesson at hand. So, El Teletrabajo, and once again, for the persons now joining, we, this live is basically, we are also live on YouTube. We are streaming live on YouTube. And this live is basically teaching Cape Spanish Unit 2, which is what most persons will do at Form 6. And we deal with the Module 3, which is one of the modules where persons um, have to write their comprehension on. They have to do a reading comprehension on. And most times they have to write the answers in Spanish. You have two. One in Spanish has to be written in. One has to be re responded to in Spanish, the other one in English. Yeah, so we need to get the information before we go into actually learning the techniques and stuff for writing this. So at the point I was making, we're on the topic of teletrabajo, and teletrabajo simply means home office or working from home. And as I said, this is what many persons are forced to do in light of this COVID-19 um, pandemic that is taking place. And what is happening is Here, yeah, what is happening is that persons are um, forced to work from home. So teachers, for instance, we're at home. However, we have to do online classes, send information to students online, that sort of stuff. So that is one example. There are other persons who, because of the nature of their job, they are able to not go to work but still produce. Yeah, produce reports, produce projects, produce proposals, that sort of stuff. And this is basically an example of teletrabajo. To give us a proper definition for it, is uh, teletrabajo simply means or simply has to deal with baby bling what's up. Um, una persona que realiza uh, una empresa o, un, o su trabajo desde un lugar alejado de la sede por un sistema de telecomunicación. So, 
teletrabajo simply means is a job that a person realizes or a person fulfills, sorry, for a company from a faraway place. What's up, what's up? Um, are you a Spanish student, baby bling? Or you just follow the page and you decide to join on and see what it is we are about? Leave a message now, drop a message, let's know. I like to know where the followers come from, what are their interests, you know? <laughs> Before I continue the lesson, yeah? Many times persons tell me, you know, you where you do, you study Spanish at university level, you like Spanish so much, you teach in Spanish, and persons are amazed by this, you know? I know some students have no choice, they have to do it as they have been mandated by the school to do a, a, a foreign language for CXE, uh, for CXE. And other persons like it so much that they want to go to form six level. I was one of those persons back in my day. But I'm interested to know why persons are interested in the language. Actually, I was a span. You were a Spanish person. Entonces, ¿te puedo hablar en español? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I don't understand what you mean. So you actually used to like Spanish. You're a school student at Valencia Secondary, and you thought it was too hard to drop it. Yes, it's a common, common thing that we get from many students. It's two, two complaints that persons usually have where it is they drop the Spanish. One, they say most times, number one cause, they say is because of our bad experience with a teacher. I've done my own personal research and surveys and stuff on this. It's usually a bad experience with a teacher is one, and the second reason you basically find it's too hard. And I will admit that there are some concepts in Spanish, especially when you're talking about the grammar and stuff, that may be difficult for students to grasp, especially when we're learning it as a second language. But this is why at Quintessential, we believe we have the remedy. In spite of it being hard, some things being a little bit harder to grasp. This is why we believe it is imperative that you must bring that interaction and that invasion. Yes, it is impossible to learn Trinidad and Tobago without knowing about carnival. Carnival is part of our culture. Similarly, I believe that it is impossible to learn Spanish without learning the culture. So you have to know and learn about the food. You have to learn and know about the language, about the music, about the way the people dress, why they dress the way they dress, all these different things. And once the teacher can bring these things to life in his staff room, I believe it will be easy for anybody to learn a second language and Spanish in this case. So that is why we at Quintessential, we always try to incorporate that cultural aspect as well for persons because not everybody is, what's the word, not everybody feels excited about learning about grammar and vocabulary, you know, grammar by itself is not exciting. But if it is, you can get to know another culture, get to know the music, get to know how they eat and how they prepare things. I believe that this can, that can be the light switch that sparks something and somebody's going to say, hey, you know, I like this. It might be hard, some areas might be hard, but I really think I like it, yeah? So that's that. So back to the lesson at hand, though. Let's excuse me one second. Bob, Bob. I'm going to make sure I put my phone on, do not disturb. So I... Yes, unfortunately. Well, I teach Spanish. I also teach English to native speakers, Spanish speakers. Um, I don't teach English for CXE, but these are stuff that we would like to venture into, into the future. But right now, Spanish, everything Spanish, quintessential language, isn't it? Yeah? So I also teach on this side English to native speakers, Venezuelan migrants and stuff that we have here. But for you, secondary school students, Spanish. Yes. Nice. So I invite you, baby bling, to take any lesson today. You might learn something that you never knew before, even in English. Yeah. So back to this topic at hand. We're looking at teletrabajo. And as we said, teletrabajo basically means home office or working from home. And let's give that definition. Let's look at our definition again. Teletrabajo es la acción, the action, de realizar un trabajo para una empresa. So the action or the 
you know, the action or the task of fulfilling a job for a company, para una empresa. Desde, from, la casa. Yeah? From the comfort of someone's home. And it is empowered, well, from the home, or we can also say, un lugar alejado. So it might not necessarily be your specific home, but once it's any place that is away from the home, the real KD, what's up? Yeah, once it's anywhere that's away from the actual office, it is considered teletrabajo. And we are able to do this. Se realiza, it is fulfilled, for, by, excuse me, las telecomunicaciones. Through telecommunication. So, this your job, so you're basically doing your job from Mr. Gaskin. How is your um, hard work going? <laughs> so we're basically able to fulfill these tasks from the comfort, because you comfort from your home or another place. And it is done or facilitated, está facilitado con el uso de las telecomunicaciones. It is facilitated with the use of telecommunications. What does this mean? You have to use el portátil, P-O-R-T-A accent, T-I-L. Repeat that. P-O-R-T-A accent, T-I-L. El portátil, which is the laptop. So you must have use of maybe a... Yes, yes, yes. I saw the message come through. You um, actually seen that message made me... Um, it reminded me to, to to put my phone on do not disturb because I don't want anybody to call or any call to come through and I am... Um, the life feed is cut. But thank you. I'll take a look at it in a little bit. Yeah? So, we have El Portátil through the use of the... Thanks again, man. God bless you. So, the use of El Portátil, the use of the laptop, the use of... Um, once again, if persons looking at it very true, Instagram... You will see an inverted image. So the words will look back to front. It will look as if I am writing from the right side of the board to the left as opposed to the left to the right. So I invite persons that take your notes and stuff to look at me on YouTube as well. On YouTube, go on YouTube and search for quintessential language learning. And you will see we have a live stream going on, which is this class right now. Nice. So as I was saying, um, any task that is done from the comfort of your home, from a faraway place, away from the office, and it is facilitated with use of telecommunications, the laptop, airport, la red, or an internet, both mean uh, internet, um, el teléfono, um, aplicaciones, también que facilita reuniones, also apps that facilitate meetings, for instance, Zoom. All these things can be considered teletrabajo. So we have the definition of teletrabajo. Oh, and once again, let's look at the points for and the points against working from home. Some persons may feel, hey, you know, as a perfect scenario. But if you really think about it, yeah, when I say the whiteboard will look flipped or inverted from um, the Instagram feed. But if it is you, Look at it by the YouTube stream. Everything will be perfect. Will look perfect, yeah. Nice. So let's look at the, benef the benefits or the positives, and we'll also look at the negatives. Look at the positives of working from home. It's mass barato, of course. It is cheaper. Why? No, I. Gastos. They are not. Expenses sobre on uniforme, uniform or clothing. What else? Transporte. So you don't have to spend money on transport. Nice. I'll see you got that. So you don't have to spend money on transport, you don't have to spend money on uniform, 
They may even spend less money on, on um, food. Go me either. So working from home, one of the main advantages is that it's cheaper. Another advantage, I homo homo the dad. Yes, comfort. So you're working from the comfort from your home. Yeah. I menos distracciones. There's the possibility that you have less distractions working from home. Yeah. You don't have that annoying Google cut to come and ask you this, ask you that. Hey, you see that? You read this in the paper yesterday? No. So we don't have these distractions. That's why I wanted to do working from home. It is more comfortable. It is cheaper. Some any other advantages of working from home? Teletrabajo. Also, we have un horario flexible. Un horario flexible. A flexible schedule or timetable. So we're not restricted by 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or um, 9 to 5. No. We could say, hey, I want to go and do some shopping at the end of the month. I want to buy groceries this morning. If I go in the grocery for 8 o'clock, I should finish by 10. And then I can go to the bank. There will be lots of long lines at 8 o'clock to enter the bank. Or those lines may die on by 10. So let me do that. And I would reach home, have a bite, have a rest, and start to go by 1 or 2 p.m. We have that flexibility when it is working from home. We don't have that flexibility when it is working for other persons from another location. So this is another one of the benefits of working from home, yeah? So we have four main benefits of working from home. It is cheaper, comfort, less distractions, flexible timetable as well. Now let's look at some of the negatives. And the negatives include no, I, um, soporte con respecto a la, what is this word, um, ticks, ticks, tecnología. No hay soporte, let's call it, no hay soporte técnica. You have no technical support. So say, for instance, if we're in work and our laptop or computer crashes, or there's some sort of issue that comes up, we simply call IT department. They come to the rescue, and they fix our problem for us. And since we're at home, you have to be IT, you have to be everything. So if our computer stops working for some reason, then we have no real help. Yeah, if it is current goes, we have no backup generator at our home in order to assist us to continue working. This is one of the main issues of working from home. We don't have that technical support. No, I support. Support technical. While you may be saving money on things such as food, transport, uniform, it can also be where they say mass costoso it can be more costly because um un aumento in la cuenta de electricidad there's an increase in your electricity bill so during the day if it was you were at work you would have simply used any works electricity, use any works fridge, all these different things. When you're at home, fridge opening and closing, that's electricity burning there. AC is on, or the fan is on, depending on what facilities you have at home. There's the electricity burning in there as well. You have to have lights on, depending on how the lights in your home is as well. That's more electricity as well to do. So all these are some of the things, some of the issues that we face, problems that we face when it is working at home. So on one hand we can save, but on another, on another hand, it can also it may also come up to be mass costoso or more costly. 
Also, there may be mass distractions. How could we have distractions at home? When we are good persons, cannot come and check us. Entonces, visitas de familia y amigos. Persons, it's possible that persons don't respect our time. No respetan a nuestro tiempo y no se considera como tiempo para trabajar. Persons don't respect our time and they don't consider it as time that we're doing good. So then we may be distractions. We may have distractions in the form of visits from friends and family members. We may also have distractions in the form of los que haceres. Los que hacer is a word we would have learned in form, 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 form by Spanish. And los que hacer is simply means chores. So if it is, I have to get something to eat, but all the ways are dirty, I have to wash the ways. Yeah, I have to wash the ways. And that has to. Okay, just give me one sec. I'm seeing a pause here in the WhatsApp video, in the Instagram, sorry. Nice, so let us continue. So the Facebook live is off of it. The Instagram live, sorry. So as we continue, so we have more distractions at home because we have been distracted by chores, visits of family members and friends, if we have kids as well. If they're at home, we have to organize for them on a distraction income. It can be more costly as well to work from home. Um, another negative, maybe we also don't have technical support. Another negative, depending on the personality, I guess, could be I, aislamiento. Isolation, yeah. So we are forced to work by ourselves. We don't have the. No tenemos colegas. Colegas. We don't have colleagues and stuff with whom we can help to pass the time of the work day. So these are the main negatives, and I'm going to leave it on the board for a couple of minutes, and then we move on to the next topic. We're moving quickly today. Move on to the next topic, which is tourism. So we just looked at new trends in business, and this would have included e-commerce um, and some of the innovations we looked at and the impact of benefits and negatives towards um, businesses. We also looked at home office and the disadvantages and advantages. And now next we're going to look at tourism. So take a minute or so just to finish copy that down and then we move on to tourism. Right, so let's look at move on to tourism now. And a definition for tourism is this. I'm going to read it out for you. I have been this notes prepared before. Turismo is um, el conjunto de las acciones que una persona lleva a cabo mientras viaja y pernocta 
en un sitio diferente de su residencia habitual en un periodo consecutivo que resulta inferior a un año. Antes de finalizar, escrito así, definición punto de e, definición dot de, de, de site, a website. Tourism is defined as. Let's make sure we see this well. Nice. Tourism is defined as el conjunto de acciones. El conjunto de acciones que una persona visita a space of change of some women hace that a person does mientras viaja Y pernoca. Pernoca means the overnight or the spare night. En un sitio. Diferente. De su residencia. Habitual. From the usual residence or habitual residence, for un periodo inferior de un año. For un periodo inferior de un año. A period of time less than a year. So have a look at that while I discuss some other things. So tourism, basically, as the definition is saying, yeah, is any transaction, sorry, not transaction, is another human being or a person does, whereby they travel and overnight in a place that is different from their usual place of residence, and this is done for a period of time that is usually less than one year, yeah? So that's the general definition of tourism. Now, the thing is, we have to look at the different types of tourism, cultural tourism. We have, like, so say, for instance, to take part in some cultural activity, for instance, the best example that we have is carnival. We also have business tourism. Persons come to do or go to a country with a specific reference or for the, with a specific reason of um, spending time to do some sort of business deal or transaction. We also have educational tourism, this person's going to a place to study for a period of time that is short, not a full year, or they may break that stay by returning home before the year is over. We also have sport tourism. Sport tourism is when persons travel the world to take part in some sort of sport. So say for instance, when the Olympics takes place and persons, so the next Olympics is carded for Japan, persons go to Japan, and they spend that whole time that they spend, they're going to the games and seeing Japan. But the main reason for doing that is for the sport that has taken place, which is track and field. So that's a definition of, that's an example of sport tourism. We also have ecotourism, which is what we want to focus on. Ecotourism, most importantly. <laughs> And this has to do with sustainable development. Yeah? Eco turismo. Eco turismo. Turismo. And eco tourism is turismo que disfruta del medio ambiente. De manera que sea sostenible. So, 
ecotourism is any sort of tourism that enjoys of this fruta, this fruta or gosa del medio ambiente, enjoys environment de manera que sea sostenible. So you're enjoying the environment, but in such a way that is sustainable. What does sustainable mean? No. Dañamos al ambiente. We do not damage the environment. No. Cambiamos. Alteramos. Ni robamos. del ambiente. So, we do not change the environment, we do not alter the environment, and we do not steal from the environment. We do not take anywhere away, we do not take anything away from it, we do not harm it, but there's enjoyment of the environment in such a way that preserves it in its natural state. So let me just include that here. Para preservarlo. Para Preservarlo. To preserve the environment in su estado natural. So to preserve the environment in its natural state. So that's what we talk about when we talk about ecotourism. And this whole word that we call a sustainable, sustainable basically means that listen. However, we are using that thing right now in the present, keeps it that way for the future. So by not damaging the environment, not changing, altering, or rubbing the environment, we allow it to stay in its natural state for future persons to enjoy it the same way we enjoyed it, or maybe even better than we enjoy it, enjoyed it. So that's what we talk about when we um, reference ecotourism. Yeah? Next, we want to look at agriculture. Moving rapidly today. Agricultura, agri, la agricultura es la labranza o cultivo, cultivation or sowing of the soil. E incluye todos los trabajos, or jobs, or it refers to all those jobs, all those tasks, tasks that are related to treatment of the ground and plants, you know, fruits, vegetables, that sort of stuff, right? Agricultural activities are usually destined or, <coughs> excuse me, or usually relate to, agricultural activities usually relate to the production of foods and the obtaining of vegetables, fruits, grains, and cereals. Yeah? Examples of vegetables, as we know, um, carrots, Peppers, spimientas, las zanahorias, fruits, we have el mango, uh, la guanaba, la guayaba, la guayaba, sorry, el banano, la banana, el plátano, all these are the families of same banana. Ortizales, for instance, la avena, which is, these are oats, oats, la avena is oats, ortizales, greens, and cereals as well, yeah? Greens like rice and that sort of stuff. So, agriculture has to do with the transforming of the environment to satisfy needs of man, and these needs are the needs to eat. Las necesidades de comida. So, let's look at the definition and as well as the features of agriculture. Excuse one second. So, agricultura es la labranza o cultivo de la tierra para transformarlo para excuse 
hacer los trabajos relacionado o relacionados con el sexo el tratamiento del suelo treatment of the ground y and we also have plantación o la plantación de vegetales y fruta o frutas. Yeah? So all these activities that have to do with transforming the, the, um, the land in order to cultivate fruits and vegetables, this is what we deem as agriculture. And one of the issues that we have when we're talking about called GMOs or organismos um, modificados genéticamente, organisms that have been modified genetically. So, okay, there seems to be a minor drop. Seems to be a minor drop in the in the um, feed there. Modificados genéticamente, and they refer to the transference of genes from one organism to the other, okay, in order to make a new organism. So GMOs O E M refer to la transferencia de genes de un organismo a otro para crear uno nuevo y aumentar los beneficios que obtenemos. So, GMOs, these were the transference of genes to an organism from, from one organism to another to create a new organism and to increase, this is an E, aumentar los beneficios, the benefits that are received from that organism. So what are some of the benefits that we can receive from GMOs or genetically modified foods? Some of these benefits include, but are not limited to. Yeah, some of these benefits include, but are not limited to. Um, resistencia contra pesticidas o ciertas pesticidas y insectos, so resistance against some pesticides and insects. Once again, resistencia contra ciertas pesticidas e insectos resistance against it in pesticides and la el añadir de ciertos nutrientes so that we also add certain uh, nutrients to this those are some of the main the main benefits that are associated with gm foods are uh, Las características genéticas del organismo, also to alter or change the characteristics of the organism. 
for instance, we may want it sweeter, we may want something that is sweeter in taste. Yeah, all these are benefits of GMOs. So, we had a shorter session today, guys. We went through this stuff very quickly. And that brings us to the end of today's class. So we have this here for all persons that are interested. I hope this was helpful to you. And once again, next week, starting from the 23rd, we'll be doing actual past paper questions. So stay tuned to quintessential language learning for that. And we have a lot more in store for you. Cheers.